Hey everyone, it's Jackie from Vegan Yak Attack and I'm back with a brand new recipe. This time we have a dump and bake style casserole for you, which I promise sounds tastier or is tastier than it sounds rather. And I have an autumn squash wild rice bake. Yum. Basically all the fall ingredients that are super delicious, some herbs and spices that also are very reminiscent of fall and maybe a little winter as well. Um, we have our butternut squash, apple for just a hint of sweetness, tempeh for some rich protein. You can also use white beans instead if you do not eat soy. Then we have some nice wild rice here, some rainbow carrots in this case. That's why there's some weird looking yellow ones. Some yellow onion, some parsnip, like I said, those herbs and spices, a little tahini for some creaminess and a little like nuttiness. And then we have some hot, and you want it to be hot, vegan chicken broth or just regular vegetable broth is totally fine. Now to get right into this, I'm going to head I'm going to go ahead and move this in front. And again, move this thing. You will need a nine by 13 baking dish or pan. I have a pan in this case, but a casserole dish, whatever is fine. So as I mentioned, it's a dump, it, dump and bake. So we're just gonna start throwing stuff in there and then stir it up, cover it, bake it like that easy, so easy. So like I said, we have our butternut squash. You can also use like acorn squash or, oops, the oven's ready, or any other type of like winter squash that's, that's hard. We have our wild rice. And then our tempeh. Our yellow onion. And we'll give this another stir after everything is inside. And then our carrots, thinly sliced, so that they cook through all the way are diced more like chopped apple in this case, but either way is fine. Parsnip for that really like root vegetable flavor. If you don't have parsnip by you, um, I feel like celery root would also be a really great option for this as long as you peel it first. And then here, let me see if I can remember all of what's in here, but we have some salt and then some onion powder, rosemary, nutritional yeast. We have white pepper, ground sage, thyme, and some smoked paprika. And the smoked paprika here is um, just the perfect amount to where it's not overpowering the other flavors. It just kind of warms this dish up a little bit. And I really like what it has to offer here. So go ahead and shake this all over. There we go. And then lastly, as I said, you want this broth really hot because it's going to save us some time in the oven. Otherwise, if it was just like room temp or cold, then the mixture would have to get hot first in the oven, which takes a little bit more time, and then it would start cooking the rice properly. And so we, we just kind of want to like expedite everything, right? Make this a little quicker because it is still a long baking time. So now I'm adding the tahini into the broth and we'll just whisk that together before stirring it in. And then if you can't have sesame um, allergy or whatever, uh, sunflower seed butter would also work well here. I feel like peanut butter would be maybe just a little too strong of a flavor for this. Like I said, give that a little whisk to combine. There we go. Bring this back over and just pour it over the top. There we go. Give this a little stir and make sure those spices and stuff are evenly distributed. And we're gonna stir this once more as it's baking because the rice is heavy, it sits at the bottom of the dish and we don't want it to sit there the entire time. So that's why we wait like halfway through cooking. Stir it again to kind of like fluff it up so it doesn't just turn into this like rice crust, which sounds interesting. <laughs> but that's not necessarily what we want here. We want it to be like cooked through and fluffy, but still a little chewy. Okay, get those apples and everything 
Just want a little bit of everything everywhere, basically. Okay, so you see, that's our mixture. Now we cover it tightly with some foil. If you do not have foil, which in this case I do, I have a lot of it actually, or if you're trying to go a lower or zero waste route, what you can do here is, um, you know, make sure that your casserole dish has handles on the side, but just place a sheet pan over the top of it. And then that way you still get that uh, steam, you know, built inside, but you don't have to like wrap it with foil and stuff. So now we can just put this in the oven. The first bit will be 40 minutes. So you can just clean dishes. <laughs> There's not that many dishes from this really. Um, you know, maybe do some emails. I don't know. Find something to do, read a book, play Animal Crossing, whatever you want. Um, but yeah, this is gonna go in there for 40 minutes, then we'll stir it and then we'll cook it for an additional time. Okay, it's been 40 minutes. Now to squat down and pull this out carefully. I'm going to lift part of this foil. Ow, woo, woo, woo. Be careful of the steam, of course. Here we go. Okay, so you can see things are soaking up some of the liquid, but obviously there's still quite a bit of liquid in here because the rice is not cooked all the way. So we're just getting all this stuff from around the edge to get some of that rice closer to the top, fog up your glasses, you know. The norm. Okay, now just hook this back on and then we'll put it in for another, uh, kind of varies, but we'll say 25 to 35 minutes. Check at 25, see if it's okay. Probably go closer to 30, 35. We'll see. All right, let's check this out. I brought plate and fork in case it's ready. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Let's put that over there. Mmm. The sage and the rosemary just smells so good in this right now. It is so hot though. But wow, here, I'll uh, lift this up so you can get a look. The grains are all cooked, which is good. That's what we want. And I'm kind of salivating a little bit, just staring at this. So I'm gonna give this like <laughs> five or so minutes uh, to cool a little bit before I plate it up and give it a try. Okay, I'm glad I waited because I forgot a spoon last time and that kind of would have been a pain in the ass to scoop out with a fork. So here we go. Also, I brought out some toasted pepitas. Um, this is an option for topping this if you want a little crunch, a little extra protein even, um, but I think it's honestly delicious without them. I just didn't want to forget to mention that to y'all. So let's get a nice scoop in. Ooh. And the longer you wait for this to cool, cause this is still like very hot, <laughs> the more the liquid will soak up. Cause there's just a teeny, teeny bit of liquid here at the bottom of this one. Ooh, do you see how steamy that is? Maybe, maybe you see it, but it is steamy and hot and I'm kind of um, scared to try it. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> All right. Let's just do it. Let's just get this over with. Hopefully I don't burn my tongue. Get a little carrot, a little apple, a little tempeh. Ooh, put that there. It's a nice bite. Mmm. 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 I did forget to mention, once this is done, 
Just do a coarse sprinkling of salt on top. Actually, let me grab that right now before I forget again. Just because I don't have you add a ton of salt into the mixture before cooking because the flavor would kind of like cook out anyway. Um, and I don't want to just like pump you full of sodium if it's not necessary. So we're just gonna sprinkle some coarse salt on top. I'll get this one since this is dinner. And you can even do like an herb salt. Actually, I'll link one of those in the description. Um, I have just a homemade DIY herb salt that I like to give for Christmas that is um, very popular with my family and friends. So that would be really excellent on top of this. Now, go back to eating this with the um, Nice grains, and the wild rice is cooked perfectly because I don't know if you've cooked that separately before, but it usually takes uh, a bit longer than say like white rice or even short grain brown rice. Mmm. That's really good. It's just like fall on a plate. So, so good. I will include the link in the description for the whole recipe and then there's a litany of substitution options I give you in the blog post as well. If for some reason you aren't able to get a hand on um, any of the ingredients here or you know your pantry, you're just like, oh shit, I forgot to get fill in the blank. Hopefully I can help you out with that list. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next week.